in the RCS High Flow Touch and the Compressed Gas Adapter. My name is Kelly Mazzi. I'm one of the field marketing associates supporting these products. Um, one of the things that I will ask you to do to begin with is I'd like you to um, find Pin Me um, on the attendees list and uh, pin that. To pin that name, um, what you need to do is hover over the three dots to the right of the um, Pin Me, and this will prioritize the video feed and will allow you to enlarge it and take up a majority of the screen when I go through and do the hands-on portion. So as I said, I'm Kelly Mazzi. I'm the field marketing associate covering food and beverage products. Thank you so much for attending me, uh, attending today um, and giving me a reason to kind of dress up a little bit, feel a little normal. Um, I'm very appreciative to talk with people that are older than two and three years old. So thank you very much. Um, please follow the directions on the first slide to pin so that you can see the video portion. Uh, thank you so much for attending to all of our essential workers on the call. Uh, thank you so much for going to work, for keeping our food supply going. Um, we really do appreciate what you're doing. So we're going to get into the portion. So we're going to talk about the RCS High Flow Touch um, and our compressed gas adapter. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please go through and put them in the chat box. We have two of our other field marketing experts that are on the call um, and they will be going through and monitoring the chat box um, and answering any questions that you have. So we can go through and get started. So one of the very first questions that we usually get is, why should I do air monitoring testing? So I'm going to go through, and, and HACCP is certainly um, a very crucial management system. Um, that's going to be used for food safety, and it's addressed through the analysis, the control of biological, chemical, and physical hazards. This is going to be in raw material production, procurement and handling to manufacturing, distribution, and then consumption of the final product. So we are actually going to go through, there are seven principles in HACCP, and air monitoring is going to fall under principle four for establishing monitoring procedures. So this is going to be your planned sequence of observations or measurement measurements to assess whether a critical control um, point is under control. So trending data can help you figure out if there's a loss of control and action needs to be taken, and you can get some of that data using air monitoring. It can also tell you um, and give you written documentation that you can have for audits, and it can help prevent downtime and um, enable you to have less interventions by giving you a heads up that there may be a problem forming before it gets to that actionable level. In the long run, EM can be very important because it can lead to better facility management, so you have less downtime, better understanding of your hazard areas, less interventions could potentially be needed, so you could be tracking um, your zones to mitigate the recurrence of different problems. You can have less testing due to better facility control, less production downtimes when you have positives, and also improve sanitary programs and reduce sanitary costs and labor. So that's really talking about the why we should do error monitoring. So we're also going to talk about um, why uh, the other question that we typically get is about the how. So a lot of companies right now aren't necessarily doing air sampling in the food and beverage industry. They may potentially be doing settle plates or spraying gas on a sponge instead. Um, but in reality, these really aren't as effective methods for determining microbial load in air or, or gas in your facility. They're semi-quantitative ways of measuring the load in a space. So this is kind of an elementary uh, schematic of, of what you'll see. But what we can see here is typically organisms in the air are going to be found on particles. The particle is kind of the carrier for that organism. Uh, many of those particles that are smaller than eight microns, they're not going to settle out of the air onto a plate. So think of what you could potentially be missing in your testing. Um, so what we can see in this photo is that the settle plate may be going through and capturing a lot of those larger organisms uh, or larger particles that could be carrying organisms, but you're going to see those smaller particles are, are missed. Whereas when you do uh, air monitoring, that air monitoring is going to go through and pull in those smaller particles between two microns and eight microns. So it's more consistent result each time. Um, you're able to quantify those results, which is going to make it easier to spot trends and see spikes in contamination. So then you can go through and, and take action.
Does anybody have any questions? Can you start over? <laughs> Uh, how many slides are we behind here? Um, I'm only on slide four. Okay. Did you? Was there anything that we had to do with the piece of uh, equipment before you got to this slide here yet, or? Um, no, not at this point. Okay. So we were just going through um, as a quick recap and talking about why you should potentially do air monitoring um, in your facility and then also talking about how to do that. Um, so the recommendation of, of going through and using a viable air monitor and why it's important and different from using a settle plate. So we were just okay, about thanks. yep, to go through and talk a little bit about the compressed gas regulations. So one of the other pieces that I was gonna show you today was our compressed gas adapter. So compressed gas testing is important because compressed gas can actually go through and harbor a wide range of microorganisms. It's a warm, moist environment. Organisms can multiply quickly and um, that can overwhelm a filter causing product contamination. Um, point of use filters can and also do fail. So compressed gas testing is key to go through and ensure filter integrity and, and effectiveness. Two regulatory bodies both have guidance for compressed gas testing. These are going to be shown on the slides. So the FDA and SQF also have guidances. It goes through and just talks about any compressed air or gases that are mechanically introduced to food, um, either used to um, in clean food contact to clean food contact surfaces or equipment. Um, those should be treated in a way as that um, your food is not going to be contaminated with that um, indirect food additive. Um, so these are kind of the guidances that you can go through and look at in order to do your test uh, compressed gas testing. Uh, final point about um, testing is that contamination can have a huge impact on product production, the consumer. Um, going through and detecting early contamination can certainly prevent um, the release of a product that may spoil as well as an adulterated product that may lead to a recall. Early testing protocols can also help prevent biofilm buildup so you can keep your compressed gas system specifically in check and, and release a safe product. So the two solutions that we have talked about are the RCS high flow with the compressed gas adapter that we have. It allows you to not only sample viable air, but compressed gases as well, which can save uh, a manufacturing site time and money. So the instrument uses the same consumable for both samples that you're taking, and that can also uh, streamline your sampling process. So just a quick overview about the RCS high flow touch that we have. It's a, it's a rotor centrifugal, centrifugal impaction principle that it's used. Um, so the microorganisms that are contained in the air, they're accelerated with centrifugal forces and they're equally distributed onto the auger strips. You can see here the air is going to be pulled into the rotor head. It's going to go through and surface around. It's going to impact on the auger and then come out and, and go out of the air direction ring that we have on the instrument. And I will show this to you in a second when we we do the hands-on demo. There are just some technical specifications that I wanted to talk about for the high flow touch. A lot of the questions that we get um, are about the flow rate. So the flow rate is 100 liters per minute. So you are able to take a, a cubic, um, a thousand liter sample, uh, a cubic meter in 10 minutes. The battery capacity is typically five to six hours. It takes approximately two to three hours to go through and recharge the instrument. It does have seven preset volumes. There are three uh, individual volumes that you can go through and set yourself. You do have a timer that you can set if you wanted to do a little bit of a delay before you have the instrument start taking the sample. Uh, the housing material is a polycarbonate and then the autoclavable sampling head, you have the air direction ring, the rotor, and then the protection uh, cap, which is stainless steel. Those can all be autoclaved and it has a touch screen. For the RCS compressed gas adapter, this is what it looks like and there's the attachment. It's used to monitor ambient air and compressed gases. Um, there's no external pressure reducer required. That could always be a potential source of contamination. Uh, the adapter is autoclavable and it can be also disinfected with sterilized hydrogen peroxide. Um, this is to be applied for all non-flammable and non-toxic gases. Um, and as you can see here, this is the actual instrument. And what comes with the instrument are the um, reduction nozzles. So the reduction nozzles you can see in this chart that you have to actually go through um, and you have to pick the right nozzle in order to go through and, and reduce the amount of um, pressure that's coming through the system. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in the hands-on portion. 
This is what a potential setup could look like. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get to a compressed cast line in my house today. So I wanted to make sure that I was able to go through and show you kind of an actual setup of what the instrument could look like. Um, we have the compressed gas adapter on top and then you have your compressed gas line connected. So I will show you both of these pieces in a second. Our RCS High Flow Touch uses our Hycon auger strips. Um, they are individually wrapped, which actually goes through and reduces waste that you may have. They are stored at room temperature. Um, and there is a reclosable sleeve, a cover slide that we have um, on each of those. So I will show you those as well. And these are just some of the different formulations that we have available for the auger strips. So. I am going to get to the better portion of the presentation and we will start our hands-on part. So I'm just going to go through and share my video. Hold on one moment. Okay, so you should be able to go through and see my desktop. So real quick, just gonna go through, say hi. So I just so you can put a face to the name here and then we're gonna go through and start to show you what the instrument looks like. So it is a little tricky to go through and actually see the home screen that we have here. So I'm gonna do my best to be able to have you guys see it as best as you can. So this is the actual RCS um, high flow touch that we have. This is the latest model. Um, there were, uh, we actually started out with the RCS standard. Um, so if you're familiar with that, that would actually look more like um, kind of an old flashlight that we had. Um, so this is the latest improvement. One of the nice pieces is that it is uh, it does have a high resolution touch screen, which you can see right here. It does go through and work with gloves that you have on. So it does go through and will pick up um, by the sensor that it has. So you can go through. Um, I did talk about it having seven preset volumes, um, sampling volumes, and you can use the arrows here to go through and toggle between those different volume sets. So I'm gonna leave it at a thousand, li thousand liters. Um, it does have an intelligent battery design. So the battery is actually housed within the unit. Um, the nice piece about that, we used to have re um, removable batteries in the previous version. So it's really nice. It's a lithium ion battery. It doesn't hold or a, a memory for the charge anymore. So you used to actually have to um, kind of decharge the older models that we had. You don't have to do this anymore. It's like your phone battery. So even if it's only halfway charged, you can go through and charge that back up fully um, on the instrument. So it makes it really um, easy. It has an ergonomic design. Um, it's very intuitive, um, user-friendly navigation on all the menu options. And the other thing that I would really like to point out is, um, and it might be a little hard to see, but if you can see right here, we can see our battery and it's gonna go through and show you that indication. So it's green right now, which means that we have a good battery life. Um, next to it, you can actually see that there's numbers. Um, the instrument right now says that there's 20 24 samples left on this battery capacity. So what's really nice about that is the fact that if you, let's say you forgot to charge your instrument or something like that, you're going through, um, you come into work the next morning, you have the ability to be able to know on the charge that you have right now, how many samples you can take. And that number will actually change depending on the um, volume that you put on the instrument. So now it's telling me that I have greater than 30 samples that I could go through and take at 500 liters. Whereas at a thousand, when we go back, we're back to around 26. So I always think that that's a nice feature because you know if you have 15 samples left for the day, you're gonna know that you're gonna be able to take all of that on the battery charge that you have. And it's gonna enable you to be able to know um, whether or not the, the instrument needs to be charged, which could, which could save you time. You can do uh, or use the instrument um, vertical or horizontally when you're going through and taking, taking your samples. Um, 
and I'm going to go through and show you. This is the protection cap for the instrument. So as we talked about, this is stainless steel. This is autoclavable. It goes right on top. And then here we have the actual rotor for the instrument. Um, there is a magnetic coupling flange that's on the top here. So when you go through, it's really nice. When you put the rotor back on the instrument, it actually goes through and just kind of snaps right back into place. So if you can see here, this is where the air is going to be pulled in through the rotor head. The rotor head is going to, um, or the rotor inside is going to actually spin and that's gonna go through and push um, and impact those bugs onto the auger that's going to go in here. So I'm gonna show you what our auger strips look like. So this is the RCS auger strip that we have. Um, this is gonna have the same surface area as a settle plate. So it's validated. Uh, it's a fully validated system that we have. As the PowerPoint said, every fifth slide is act or uh, strip is going to come with its own cover slide. Um, you do have the ability to go through and purchase more cover slides which I actually have in the bag right here. Um, some of our customers will go through and reuse them. Um, but as I said, there's only five that come in the package. So these are what they look like. And they're very nice if you're going through and when you incubate your sample, if you didn't potentially want to use tape, you could use the cover slide instead, um, but you are able to use tape to tape them closed. So we have a wide range of formulations for um, bacteria. We have our TC, our total count strips. We also have SDA as well that you're able to go through and use for your sampling. So in order to load the instrument, we can go through and slide our cover slide down. We're going to actually peel back. Get my hand on here. We're gonna actually peel back the top. We're going to pull out the auger strip itself actually has this little tab at the very top. I know it's kind of hard to see, I'm sorry, but there's a little tab right up here before you get to the actual auger. So we can go through and pull that out. What we do always recommend to our customers is that when you pull the slide out, you wanna try and go through and grab in the middle of the strip when you pull it out. That's gonna help you when you're going through and loading this into the uh, rotor head. We're gonna make sure that we are keeping our uh, strip media face down and in our rotor head you're going to see this is where we're going to go through and load our strips you can see that there's a little tab right there and we're going to go in and the auger strip goes right there and we're just going to push that through now while we do that we just want to make sure that we're keeping our hands there's a little bit of a lip on the outside we just want to make sure that we're keeping our hands on the outside of that lip and not coming in contact with the auger that's there one of the keys that you want to make sure to do is um, we don't want to leave, if you can kind of see that, we want to make sure that we don't leave the end of the strip out. We want to make sure that it's flush with the tab that we have. And then we can go through, and as I said, that's going to kind of go through and magnetize itself back onto the top of the instrument. Sorry, we'll go through and replace our protection cap on, and then we are ready to go through and take our sample. One of the nice things while you are taking your sample is you do have the ability, you can toggle between how much time is left, and then you can also go back through and you can toggle with how much volume is left on the instrument. There is a cable-based charging system um, that we have, so you can go through and charge the instrument um, just like you would your phone. Um, you can take about uh, 30, uh, 1,000 liter measurements on a single charge. The instrument is, go through and stop that. The instrument is calibrated on a yearly basis. Um, and it is a fully validated system, as I said before, with our auger strip media. Um, these strips do come single packaged that you can see here. So what I was saying before was sometimes if you're going through and using settle plates for sampling, if you um, only need to take three or four or five samples, then what do you do with the rest of those plates that you have? What's really nice about these is because they are individually packaged, you can go through and use them for the period of time until they expire. So if you're potentially testing quarterly, um, you could go through them and, and potentially keep those strips um, that you have. So you're gonna have less waste when you're doing your sampling. 
So if we go through, we can take our protection cap off. We would take our rotor out and then we could go through using the pull tab at the top. We could pull that out, slide our auger back out, keeping that face down. We would go through, oops, sorry about that. And we would go through, we could open back our strip, place that back in and then close the cover slide. And that's what we would go through and incubate and get our results on. So I wanted to go through and just if we can, if you can see, um, this was taken in my house. So I don't know whether to feel happy about that or not happy about that, but you can see some of the growth. Obviously this was not um, incubated yet. Um, so this is the growth that I got without incubating the strip. Um, so you can see that you do have your colonies that grow and form on the strip itself. So it's a really nice, it's, it's a proven air monitoring system. It's flexible, very convenient, really easy to use. So once you have the instrument set up um, with the sampling volume that you have, it really is almost as easy as just going through and, and pressing play on the instrument um, in order to use this. Um, so we do have the compressed gas adapter that I'm going to talk about as well. So this is what the compressed gas adapter actually looks like that works with the RCS High Flow Touch. So what this is designed to do is this is designed to reduce the air velocity. Um, so you're going to go through and apply the compressed gas in a pressure uh, um, pressureless to the RCS instrument. So we're going to have on the compressed gas adapter here, what you can see, this is going to be the diffuser portion, um, that kind of cone piece for the instrument. We do have um, a reduction nozzle as well. So if we take the top part off of the instrument, I'm just going to go through and show you. These are the different reduction nozzles that we have. So this is what's placed within the instrument in order for you to be able to go through and reduce the amount of pressure that is going to flow through the system. So you can go through and put your barb fitting back on. Um, one of the nice pieces is this is an R and a quarter um, connection. This can also be replaced. Um, you can use a quick coupling connection, which goes through and makes it very easy for you to um, kind of uh, quick click connect your compressed gas line right onto the instrument. The airflow is going to be restricted by that reduction nozzle that I just showed you. And then what you're going to see is that the excess gas is going to actually be re released um, through this portion of the instrument here. So these exhaust channels that we have, and that's going to go through and get released on the outside of the protection cap that we have um, on the RCS instrument. So I'm going to go through and show you what this looks like quick. So I'm going to put this down. So this is what the instrument actually looks like. So we have our compressed gas head that's going to be connected to the RCS high flow touch here. And that's really how it works. Um, it's very a simple system to use together. You can go through and, and you can rinse or spray um, and clean the um, compressed gas adapter with disinfecting agents, or you can go through and autoclave it. So in order to actually use this system set up, um, you want to go through and check the pressure that you see, the inlet flow rate that's in your um, uh, compressed gas line. So you want to make sure you check that in order to go through and pick which RCS nozzles that you're going through and using. So this is an additional kit that you can go through and buy. It's going to come with five additional um, nozzles that we have available and that's going to depend on the um, uh, pressure that you have within your system if you needed to use a different um, uh, different reduction nozzle size. If you have any more questions about that, um, please feel free to reach out to your sales rep and we can walk you through how that works. So then when you're going through and going to actually take your sample, we would open our compressed gas uh, line. We would let that run for about a minute before taking our sample. We would go through and sample, and then we could go through, we would close that lineup. We would take our compressed gas off, and then we would go through and take out our auger strip as I showed you before. So 
So I know that was kind of a quick demo of what the RCS capabilities are. Um, we do have software that is available with the instrumentation as well um, that can go through and you can connect the instrument to your computer and you can set up sampling parameters that you have and that would all get downloaded onto the instrument. You can also pull any reports that you have from the in, uh, instrument, but your counts would need to be done um, manually. So if anybody has any questions, we can go through um, and answer anything that you have. I don't know if there were any questions in the chat box so far, um, but please feel free to uh, ask away. No questions so far, Kelly. Okay. Did I not show anything or discuss anything that anybody had any questions about? So there are services that we offer that are available for the RCS um, system. We do have a validation protocol that you can go through and purchase. Um, oops, sorry. Sorry, I was looking at a different question. So there is a full line of services that are uh, um, as the validation protocol and we can come on site as well and we can perform that validation protocol for you um, in order to get your instruments up and running uh, very quickly. One of the other questions that we got in the chat box is how do you clean the red chamber? So, So this is the rotor head. So this can actually be autoclaved. Um, so you can go through and autoclave this piece um, and then use it. That's probably the best way. Um, you can also rinse and spray um, with cleaning and disinfecting agents as well um, within the rotor. Um, Tim, I don't know if there, uh, I know we have had customers that have gone through and um, submersed this into the cleaning sanitizing agents. Do we not recommend that? If you do submerse it into something, you would want to make sure you finish with an alcohol rinse because those those sanitants can be pretty oxidizing. Harmful. So Norman asked, thank you, Norman. Uh, how do you determine the flow rate for yeast and mold sampling? So for the different types of media that we have, we have total count yeast and mold. So there's not going to be a different um, flow rate uh, depending on the type of media that you're going through and using. So with the system, um, what we have um, is 100 liter per minute for the flow rate. Um, we've done extensive validation studies that that is really going to give you the best biological and physical efficiency for the instrument. Um, we really want to make sure that you're not um, upon the impaction speed that you get, um, killing any of the organisms that you're trying to go through and capture. So at 100 liters per minute, that's really going to give you um, the, the best efficiency for the instrument. So depending on what media type you're using, that does not determine um, the flow rate that you would have. So you would use the same flow rate for your yeast and mold, your TSA, um, that doesn't really have a bearing on the flow rate for the instrument. It's more of a performance feature. Yep, and as Tim just said, to answer the um, what type of spray you would use, you can use a 70% IPA. That would go through, that would work. Any other questions? 
One of the other nice features that I will just go through and show quick um, is when your rotor head or the instrument's actually out of ca calibration, as you could just see, it will beep um, at you and it will show you a little bit of um, a red circle around the, the rotor head that you have. And that will go through and indicate that you do need to have the instrument calibrated, which is a nice feature, um, you know, just as a reminder to make sure that you're not using an instrument that's out of calibration. Very lightweight, easy to use, nice to carry around as well, and really sturdy when you're going through and sampling um, horizontally. Hi, Norman. Yes. So you would go through and send the unit back for calibration to Millipore Sigma. So we have a full um, a service center that goes through and, and they service each of the units um, when they come back to us. So they would go through and be able to calibrate the unit um, and then send that back to you so it's ready to go. Also, if you chose, you could have uh, different rotors, so that red part. You could have multiple rotors that are also calibrated. Yep and used in different areas if that if that makes um if that works for you yep so each rotor head actually has a serial number tied to it i know that's kind of difficult to see i'm sorry um has a serial number tied to it and like tim said you can have different rotor heads for different areas within your facility if if you wanted and, and kelly how long do we how, what's our turnaround time on calibration so typically um I, th I think we say about a two week turnaround time. Um, sometimes it is faster than that, um, but you would definitely have that, that turnaround time within that 14 days. Cyril says eight to 10 business days normally. The instrument does come when you go through and purchase it. It does come fully calibrated, so you're ready to go for uh, a year up from when you receive the instrument. And just so that you can see quick here, I do also have, um, this is the packaging that we do have uh, available for the strips that they come in. These are just our regular TC strips that we have. Um, these are not gamma radiated. We do have gamma irradiated strips as well. And if there is interest, I can actually go out of sharing mode and I can go back um, real quick to the slide that goes through and shows all of the different media options that we have. So let me share the presentation real quick. If I can pull it up. Sorry, I'm just trying to find the right presentation for you. And I'm showing the wrong. Oops, sorry about that. Let me see if I can try that again. Stop sharing. Let me see if I can share. Okay, so now on the screen, you should be able to go through and see the different auger strip formulations that we do have. We have a TC. Um, we do have a TSM, a modified auger with neutralizers um, that will uh, protection, uh, protect against disinfectants. Um, we have the gamma irradiated um, uh, terpenic soy auger. We have one with neutralizers as well. Um, and then we do have different um, selective auger media. So we have an SDA, um, we have an SDA irradiated, we have a dichlorine glycerine auger, and then a, a yeast and mold, our rose bengal auger. And they do come in different package sizes. We have 50 strips. The gamma radiated come in 40 strips. So 
Any other questions that we haven't gotten to? Yep, and Tim, thanks for highlighting the strips can be stored from uh, 2 to 25 degrees. Any other questions or comments? If not, then I think we're done. Thank you so much for hopping on this virtual demonstration that we had. We hope that everyone stays um, happy and healthy during the kind of craziness that's going on right now. If you do have any questions around the instrument um, or viable sampling in general, please feel free to reach out to your sales rep that you have. They probably had sent you the invitation um, to view this demonstration. Uh, or if you want to reach out to uh, myself, um, I can go through and I will put my email into the chat box quickly um, so that you have that. Um, and if you have any questions, um, please let us know. So have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining. And as I said before, stay uh, safe. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ellie.